Uh, I just wanted to welcome everyone to this morning's symposium. If you don't know me, I think everyone in here does. My name is Wendy Norris, and I'm a gallerist based in San Francisco, here in New York, for our sixth offsite exhibition and the first one in New York City. And the first show, as many of you already know, for Leonora Carrington in New York um, in the past 22 years. Um, today, we're focusing on Leonora Carrington, her life and influence. Um, Leonora was an artist who largely refused to talk about her work. And she told me she was simply painting the world the way she saw it. And that was that. That's what, that was that, is how she described it. In 2008, she um, and I were working on her first solo exhibition that I presented. And my gallery team um, organized a two-day press conference in Mexico City. And um, over the course of organizing that, she set very, two very um, specific conditions. Um, she said that she would refuse to speak about any of her artwork to the various 20 members. Lucy was here. She was the one who organized it for me. Um, we had 20 different print and television media outlets in Mexico City over the course of two days. And she said, I will not speak about my artwork. And I will not answer any questions about Max Ernst. So those were her two um, requirements. Um, she asked that all the questions over those two days regarding her artwork be directed to me. So for the next two days, I had the unforgettable challenge of speaking about Leonora's artwork in front of her and on the record. <laughs> she would grin most of the time and nod a lot, and I think she was either um, nodding because of the honesty of some of my responses, maybe sometimes it was the naivete of some of my responses, um, and or the accuracy of what I was saying. Um, Leonora, as we know, many of you know, she was a very heavy smoker. And so we would take a lot of breaks over those two days, a lot of smoke breaks. And over a cigarette, I would take the opportunity to ask her a question. I would approach a subject trying to peer into her mind in my hopes of better understanding her worldview. And our, our banter varied in tone and subject, and it would be about our shared concerns in the Catholic Church or Felipe Calderon and uh, government corruption, also about our trips to our respective farmers markets, hers in Colonia Roma and mine in San Francisco, and every now and then we would also talk about love and sex. So um, these conversations spanned about seven years um, for me with her, and it enabled me to get a little bit of an insider knowledge into um, better understand the world in which she saw it and the way in which she visually depicted it. Um, so why are we here today? I keep thinking, and I said this last night, that, that she would have set some very strict conditions on today's uh, symposium. Um, and if she were present today and we were able to step out for a cigarette or even maybe an afternoon tequila, which we also did, um, what questions might I wish to ask her? Um, one question I might ask today, is there a story, um, mythical perhaps, that could unite the world? And has it been written yet? Have you read it? Or, Leonora, could you write that story? On a more personal note, I would ask her, what is the role of a parent in today's world? Did you live up to that role as a mother to your two sons? What might you have done better or differently? Those are the two questions. I have about another 25, and they're not all appropriate for today's conversation, but to me, those are the two big questions I would ask her. And you know, we're here today because through Leonora's work and the arresting visual display we have here in today's exhibition, and also the literary works that have been recently republished, and even you know, last night uh, performed here in the symposium to kick it off, there lies a key into how to better live on this planet, how to more peacefully coexist with other cultures, and how within our own personal lives to be better human beings. This is why we're here today. Um, one need to only examine this painting over here, Quería Ser Pájaro, which was done in 1960. Uh, Carrieza Pajaro translates loosely into I wanted to be a bird. 
Um, this painting belonged to Maria Felix, who in 1960 was maybe the most iconic woman and one of the most iconic people in all of Mexico. She was a renowned actress and she was a friend to Leonora. Um, in this portrait, uh, and as many of you know, she didn't do very many portraits. Um, Leonora is depicting Maria's son, Enrique, and she does it with such beauty and grace. He's demonstrating to me so much wisdom and theatrics. Um, it also, for me, evokes a tender um, sentiment between a mother-son relationship, because I believe this is what Leonora was painting for Maria, as if Maria could depict what she would like her son to be dreamed how she would portray her own son. It's also a portrait of a man. It's a portrait of a closeted gay man in Mexico City in 1960. A, a man who's given the ability to really remake the world. In my opinion, he's on this spinning egg, this spinning globe. He's able to rewrite the story of the world. Maybe he's, she's giving him the power to rewrite that story. So we've organized today um, not as a way of focusing on her life, because it is so tempting to spend all of our time speaking about this biographical treasure, her life. People always want me to talk about Leonora, what she was like, her life story. But we're here to talk about her life's work. Um, and it's oriented today heavily in her legacy um, and the interconnectivities in her work. And I'm really, really, really pleased with the three people who are going to be speaking um, in the next uh, course of uh, the next few hours. We're going to begin with her time in Spain and how the people in that country influenced her and, and most likely vice versa. Um, we're then going to focus on her creative, intellectual, and very magical relationship with Remedio Sparrow. And lastly, we're going to explore the growing influence that Leonora's work has had on artists today and, and why it's so important. And that's, you know, anecdotally, I can't tell you how many people we've had, current artists working today, who come in here and speak about her influence. So I'm excited to hear what Natasha's come up with. Um, I have countless people to thank for today and people who championed Leonora's work alongside me for these past 17 years. Um, definitely a special thanks to Whitney Chadwick and Susan Averth. They not only physically introduced me to her work, but also through their research and writing, um, introduced me to um, the visual um, mysteries of Leonora's work. And they also continue to guide me to this day. And my dear friend, Tede Ark, um, with whom I share a lot of these dreams with Remedios and Leonora, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, it's, it's been a kind of a tragic week. Um, one of the housekeeping notes, Susan Aberth is not here today. Um, she had a tragic death in her family, and Tede um, just lost her mother two days ago and somehow is here, so <laughs> thank you. Um, and I want to thank my tireless team. I mean, for the last six weeks, they've been in New York and not been with their family in San Francisco, so where's Matea? Matea Fish, my director. Gabrielle Haugen, my operations manager. Tara Landers is back there, research intern extraordinaire. She's hiding out. And Jan Rothschild, who's our New York-based media consultant. Um, and also, thank you to the many uh, owners of these paintings. They've uh, entrusted me with these works, um, many of whom um, I've known for many years. They've entrusted me to find new stewards for the work. These are things that they've loved and treasured and adored in their homes for years. So thank you.